It was Ginger Baker who had persuaded the other two to combine their differing talents. It was also Ginger Baker who enabled the other two to develop their free-form playing. His playing is fragmentary, but insistent. To Jack Bruce's counterpoint, he gives rhythm. And to Eric Clapton's technical virtuosity, he gives shape. On their first tour together, he practiced so intensively that he left behind him a trail of hotel bills for broken furniture. We asked him if he still practiced as much. No, it's not. I don't practice at all. <laughs> not at all? I used to, but I don't anymore. In the distant days when you used to practice, what kinds of things do you do? I just used to... Um, well, first, first of all, I learned all the rudiments and things. I don't know whether I can play them all now. But um, then I just used to play solos. I used to just sit on the drum kit and play it all day. OK, if you were going to teach me drumming, what kind of rudiments would I have to learn? Presumably they're the same basic rhythms from which you improvise all your drumming. Uh, can you show us some? Well, I use quite a lot of them. Flam triplets. You want me to play them? Please. Uh, at this time of day. <laughs> variation of that would presumably depend on which drums you played it on. Because that, you know, if you're playing them on tom-toms, you get two sounds out of it, yeah. You get all sort of things like that out of a flam triplet. You know. Yes, sound as well as rhythm. So it starts off on a really big Usually, I just forget all about them. Show me another rhythmic pattern whose tone you can also vary by using different drums. Uh, four-stroke rough, which is that. Yeah, but you play them on around the drum, you get... That's a rudiment. If anything's a time keeper, I think it's my left foot. You know, keep time with that. You mean hitting the bass drum? Play, sort of, like, if you're using two bass drums, if you play a time with one, you can fill in with the other one, and it makes a pattern, the two of them together. Can you show us? Uh, yeah. It's just very odd, you know, when it's uh, you're just sitting here doing it. Presumably, you can also make endless rhythming patterns just with your feet. A, a foot one? Yeah, well, um... <laughs> One of the remarkable things about your playing is the way you manage to get a kind of dialogue going between your feet and your hands. Not only are your feet each playing different rhythms, but so are your hands, and that, of course, doesn't account for the cymbals. It's like a one-man orchestra. Yeah, you can get good things right on a cymbal. Can you give us an example of this kind of instrumental conversation? Again. Changing things, change the time of it by what you play on it with your left hand. You got nine different kinds of symbols. Can you tell us what each is for? Yeah. Um, this, uh, these, these two, in fact, these three are all right symbols, all for playing on, and just different sounds. I use that one for quieter things. This one, you know, that's a, that's a quieter symbol, and this one. I use um, this one. Most of the time, it's a right symbol, you know. Yeah, I use these two together to get a, a roll on them, and, and these, and that on there. So you get a, a big roll on them while they're going. At the end of numbers, you can use that 
If you want to get a roll on cymbals, those two, you know. Uh, that's a crash cymbal. Those, uh, very light cymbals. And that. Uh, it's like those three are crashes. And these three are playing on. And that's, of course, uh, joke effects. 